action. I know, I know, I am trying to rectify that. Um, I've been busy creating for for other people, <laughs> uh, doing stuff, a uh, little bit of work for other companies, and sometimes that takes that takes everything I got, and so therefore I need to reset and recharge and then try to get back into my my own personal crafting but then something else comes up and i am so sorry that i haven't been uh creating projects here i again i'm trying to <clears throat> kind of simplify my life and maybe not take on too much uh trying to switch back to where i'm working on myself and my own personal projects so i'm trying to get there and this is definitely one of those projects where i'm so excited that this is something that i've been uh waiting for and looking forward to um <clears throat> every year we you know god willing we uh, try to go on a little trip now this year because of COVID, things have been a little different but we are, uh, we are going to be able to go on a trip, on a hike, I should say, and we are going to be revisiting um, some um, beautiful and some of the most, most breathtaking places I have seen so far in my life. And uh, we are going to uh, be able to go and revisit some of these places again. This is uh, Mammoth, this place, here is called Thousand Island Lake, and we are going to be headed this way, uh, coming up here pretty soon. Uh, this shot was taking, looking down, uh, this is towards Yosemite. Uh, this is right above Danahue, uh, actually on the other side of Danahue Pass. Uh, and it's, again, this is part of, it could be the John Muir or the uh, Pacific Crest Trail. My husband and I were lucky enough to be able and privileged to be able to see these amazing places. And, <clears throat> you know, they're obviously, they're not very populated. You do get to see a few people here and there. Uh, but the, we have a permit and we are excited that we are still going to be able to go. And this year we are taking our boys with us. And so, of course, last year I prepared this journal here. And then I don't mean prepare, I mean really this, I bought this from uh, Magnolia, you know, Chip and Joanna Gaines uh, from their store. This is pure leather and the journal was something like $30 and I might've gotten free shipping or something. I love the size of this journal. This measures just about 11 inches wide by eight and a quarter <clears throat> inches tall. And because we're going again, to do this um, this hike, not the exact same hike. We will be making some changes, but uh, <clears throat> again, I didn't do anything, <clears throat> sorry, uh, too special about this. I actually did take it with me, didn't get to do a lot uh, while we were there during the hike itself. Um, I took it mainly to do some sketching. I knew I wanted to uh, do some uh, sketching of the landscape and I did a little bit. And so uh, I want to do something kind of similar, but yet a little different uh, for this year's hike. Again, due to COVID and all that, we are very blessed that we are still able to have this hike on our uh, schedule and so what i decided to do because i love this size i'm going to be making another one i shouldn't say be making another one. i will be making one and copying the size of this journal here so here we go something totally new something uh, very cool, very pretty. Uh, I struggled with the decision of what I wanted to make. I was playing around with the idea of using fabric, uh, but I mean pattern fabric. After playing uh, or visiting, I should say, Pinterest countless hours, I decided to do a little bit of embroidered work on this new cover that I'm going to be making. So this is going to be the journal that, uh, again, I'm still playing around as 
I just wanted to do a little introduction of what I have so far because I wasn't going to be filming how I did this. If you're interested in figuring out how to do your own embroidery, I suggest you look them up in YouTube. Um, start on Pinterest so that you can see some of the patterns. There are some like 40 second videos that you can watch that are very simple and that's basically what I did and kind of learned the basics. And I don't think it turned out as, you know, bad at all. I did go to Michael's and bought some uh, beautiful colors of embroidery, embroidery threads. And these were like 56 cents. So that was amazing. And so now I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I want to keep doing it because to me, this is very relaxing. It's, it's like fussy cutting. Uh, very, very relaxing. So... What I've decided that this is obviously gonna be the cover. Again, let me give you a little uh, preview of where I'm headed. This, this is paper. This is called washable paper. It is very hard to tear. You cannot tear this paper by hand. And so I wanted to use it for the spine of uh, my journal. So it's going to be something like this and then Obviously, I will be sewing this patterns together like this. So this would only be on the spine. I don't want to cover, obviously, any of this. Um, the other thing that I am planning to do is print on fabric. Not this burlap here, because this is burlap, um, but on uh, just a simple cotton uh, type of fabric. And I want to print the title of this cover which it, it will be going down here uh, again i found a lot of inspiration on pinterest and i felt that something simple like this will be perfect for this journal so that's kind of the direction where i'm headed and i will be adding probably some fabric on the inside uh, because you know obviously when you're uh, making some sort of a cover you need uh the outside and then the the i'm sorry the outside and the inside and my plan is to sandwich this um chipboard in between the cover and then whatever the fabric um that is going to go in on the inside just to make it a little bit more sturdy and then i will also be creating the inserts um not like a junk journal I do want to uh, add some pattern paper and I bought some digital kits so I have to have those printed before I can uh, continue working on that but that's just where I'm headed and from here on on I will just go ahead and do a voiceover okay you guys I was gonna do the voiceover but it turns out that because of um, <clears throat> I don't want to say the complexity but but there was a lot of thought that i had to put into the design of this i felt that it was better to kind of explain it to you uh live rather than doing a voiceover because then i forget the numbers and the measurements so okay uh this is what i ended up deciding to do i wanted my cover to be you know again uh kind of following the size of this guy over here, which is the one I used last year and I really liked it. So I ended up measuring in the, the cover, it's folded like this, turns out to be five and a quarter, which means the inserts are about five inches, which gives you uh, a little, you know gap in here between the the insert and the edge of the cover about about a quarter of an inch um so the insert which i will be making i want to use eight and a half eleven sheets just you know if you imagine this being an eight and a half by eleven and i'm going to fold them in half and to create the insert but as you know if you fold a lot of pages together like this they never lined up straight like this here there has to be some trimming done so if i start with because i'm i'm folding it in half and if it's 11 inches wide that's five and a half but because i have to trim i might end up with about five and a quarter size insert which is fine five and a quarter that's fine which means how much space do i want from the edge 
you know, from the edge of the insert to the edge of the cover. I wanted it a little bit bigger than this one. So what I have decided to do, I hope that made sense. I truly do. Um, you can always question, you know, send me a questions and I'll do my best to answer, or you can just replay this and re so that you, you know, hopefully it will make sense. So I knew that I wanted to use this type of, you know, it's a, it's a, a crafting paper, but it's very sturdy. Some people call it washable paper because it's very hard to tear. Uh, it's, you can cut it obviously, but it's very hard to tear. And I felt that this would make a great spine for the journal cover. So I cut this guy to three inches wide and then I mark a half an inch this way and a half an inch that way, which means at least the space in between is two inches, okay? So when I put my cover like this, I ended up cutting these guys at 4.75 or four and three quarters each side. So four and three quarters, that gives me uh, eight, nine, nine and a half inches, okay, between these two. Plus the two that are in here, that's 11 and a half. Okay, so it turns out that it's going to be 11 and a half. But when you fold it in half, right, that gives me five and three quarters. So my cover, once it's folded, is going to be five and three quarters rather than five and one quarter, like this one here. So it is going to be about half an inch wider, which is, I think it's fine. Uh, I, you know, in case I want to put things that are sticking out from the pages, like tabs or anything, they will be tucked inside and they won't be sticking out, which sometimes that's cute, right? So my plan is this, I'm going to wrap the covers like this with the cover, with the burlap, with the fabric all around like this. And then I'm gonna add a stitch just because I want that look of the stitching. Uh, once these are done, uh, they're gonna go, this guy is going to go on top like that. Then I'm gonna come with my inner fabric and then like that. And I will probably glue it all together and then, um, you know, add again uh, the stitching around just again because I want that. I think what I'm going to do is I have some other pieces left over here and I'm going to add um, like a little pocket. So I'm gonna cut this guy in half, then I'm gonna put it one on either side like this that's the plan i hope that the explanation made a little sense so now that i do go into a fast mode and just a voiceover uh, you can just follow along to what i have just described so hopefully that made sense okay here we go i'm going to glue uh the edges only the edges of the fabric to the chipboard and i am cutting what do you call this mitering I'm mitering the corners so that it's easier now when you do this just be careful that your corners are going to stay nice and clean uh, especially if you're using a burlap like you know a, a fabric like this that it frays really easy you want to have um, the covers the, the corners really um, sharp but also neat so that they don't come undone I'm using the fabric tack. I felt that, you know, because I'm using fabric, that it would be best for me to use this type of glue. Uh, the bottle here, it really is very old and it's kind of drying out. So it doesn't flow as easy. So it comes out in big blobs, but I still made it work. Do you see what I mean about the corners? If you cut the miters too close, um, it's almost like they don't fit, seal the corners correctly. So I'm having to go back and kind of pull and stretch the fabric to make sure that the corners are, uh, are not going to come undone. This second piece, I do it a little bit different. Uh, I'm also making sure that the embroidery design is kind of in the middle of the piece. 
and same you know just repeating the same thing uh, again I didn't cut the corners just yet and I feel that this worked a little bit better luckily the glue wasn't drying super quickly you see how loose and just gooey and <laughs> it's turning out um, but again it still worked so I'm just making sure that everything is you know going to plan that everything is laying exactly where I need it to be to make sure I'm not going to cover or not center that embroidery piece and let me tell you it was really easy it wasn't that hard to do it's it's just basically going in and out uh, up you know or down into the fabric and it it was fairly easy again if you are trying to find uh, some easy techniques I suggest to check out Pinterest uh, because like I told you before um, there are some very quickly uh, very quick little videos uh, tutorials just for specific st stitches and it works really well because this is exactly what I did so there I'm folding my corners doing a little bit of trimming it looks kind of ugly but obviously this is going to be covered with the uh, inside fabric so I wasn't too worried about it my main concern was that the corners uh, looked nice and clean and really sharp and so there you can kind of see a little bit of the idea behind where where how I wanted to look I had already marked my spaces where um, I'm going to be attaching the the chipboard to the I don't know again I think this it's called washable paper that's what I've what I've heard um, that it's called I'll try to add the links of all these supplies um, I'm pretty sure I order this craft paper through Amazon of course I've had it for a while um, I order all that stuff way before quarantine started uh, just because I knew I would have some use for this type of paper so there I was just kind of showing you that I will be adding my stitching right there to the side which very quickly I just did so I used obviously the glue to glue both of these pieces together but then I reinforced it with the stitching it's a reinforcing um, you know I, I want to make sure it's strong but it is also it looks nice it looks nice and finished to have that stitching uh, going on either side there was a lot of thinking um, that I had to do on how I wanted to put this together and this was the best way for me I'm sure that there might be other ways that you can do it but for me um, this is just how it worked so I grabbed my piece of the insert uh, or the inside fabric and you can see I cut it actually wider and actually bigger all the way around way bigger than the actual journal and then I was just tucking it in I feel like this would give me obviously much cleaner edges and I didn't want to have to uh, fidget with you know tiny little foldings and all of that I, I'm I kind of want to just move I, don't, I, I know this is probably you know not the best idea but you know I should you know there's people that iron their their fabric and crease it and they use pins I just want to move I just want to go and so this just again worked for me I folded everything and I used those um, paper clips I'm gonna call them or what do they call them they're not paper clips they're called something else but these little claw thingies um, of course I forget you know I'm talking and I forget what everything is called <laughs> where I bought it everything so um, anyways they held the fabric in place and it was easy for me to take them off when I did the stitching which you will see here I'll bring it back once it's all stitched so again I'm going to create some pockets and I had already these pieces I had I didn't cut it correctly uh, the first time um, this paper has um, a grain what I would call a grain you know how wood has a, a grain when when it wants to cut a certain direction this is the same thing um, and it was getting all creasy and not folding correctly so I had to cut an extra piece but I didn't want to waste it so I decided to use this uh, for my pockets because uh, it wasn't go there wasn't going to be any folding going on like the spine 
and there you go i'm just testing it out making sure you know everything is gonna look okay and there like magic i've stitched everything and of course my fold at the bottom sticks out a little bit uh you can kind of see it um but I think it still looks, I think it looks fine. It's handmade and it's for me. So, <laughs> so here we go with this brand new technique. I have never done this before. I'm going to print on fabric. So I put uh, this, I pulled this uh, very thin um, uh, cotton, you know, fabric. And I'm using this sticky sticker paper by Cricut because this is what I had on hand. And so I, I found this technique, of course, on YouTube. Some uh, person did it. And of course, I can't remember her name. I should have wrote it down. Um, so she, instead of using, I think a lot of people use freezer paper. And I don't know how that works. So I she showed uh, this technique where you just basically put your fabric onto the sticky side, which is it's actually backwards because obviously this is printer paper, but look at that. It printed perfect. And then you just peel it off and there you go. I found a nice little font that I wanted to use. And uh, the words that you see there, it says adventure awaits. And that's the little sign, the little title that I wanted to give my journal. And it worked out good. It worked out really well. So I'm doing a little bit of fraying. I'm pulling threads from all four corners. And that kind of gives it that little worn out, torn, kind of not necessarily vintage, but it just adds a little something. So that's it. That's it. It worked. I am definitely going to be using this technique from here on on if I ever need to print on on fabric. I think obviously if you, you have to use a thin fabric that's going to stick really well to the paper or else you might get a jam on your printer. Um, the sticker paper itself from Cricut was really thick and I was kind of nervous, but it worked. So I was very happy about that. So I'm going to add a little bit more stitching to the little sign. And you know, if I look back, I probably should have done this way before like I could have you know I could have done this um you know uh, before I did any of this stitching I could have just stitched this exactly the way the same way I'm doing it right now I'm just doing a little running stitch on all four sides I could have done that on top of the burlap right underneath the little um branch instead of of gluing it which is what I'm going to end up doing so Again, this was my first time. Um, I am not a pro at sewing. I just kind of do very simple stuff and as I'm happy with it, so I'm okay. So see, I could have just stitched that right on top of the, the burlap way ahead and then I would not have had to do it here. I could have just stitched the whole book together and the little sign would have been already uh, adhered or stitched to the cover of the journal. But because I didn't do that, I had to figure out a way to glue it or attach it. And so I just used fabric glue. And again, it worked fine. This stuff is not going to get washed, right? So it's, it's never going to move. So now I am working on the elastic band. And I'm measuring where my holes are going to go. And I had a brown one and a pink one. And I wasn't sure which one I was going to use. But in the end, the fabric on the inside and, of course, on the cover, there is pink. So it was perfect. So I'm using my crop dial to punch out the holes. Uh, it's a strong enough to punch through the fabric and the craft paper. And, you know, the, the fabric kind of doesn't cut quite perfectly see how it leaves a little bit of that fraying there but that's okay and then on the inside it looks also just fine and see how it blends so well with the pink uh, from the fabric and again from the embroidery on the front so I'm just going to uh, feed the elastic and instead of going you know you've seen a lot of journals that um, the elastic goes let's say from left to right 
you punch two holes that are uh, horizontal rather than vertical. So this time I did them um, vertically. You see the, how the two little stitches up on top, they're vertical, and I kind of like that better. I feel like they don't uh, scrunch or, or make the cover kind of um, cinch together. So I'm going to test it, make sure that uh, the journal, which I will be making later, <laughs> uh, it works. And of course, then I start thinking, oh, what's the closure? Oh, see, this is what happens when you move so fast and you don't, you know, some, I should have, you know, made a little bit better planning. I could have stitched, which you'll see how I ended up doing it, but I could have used ribbon and the ribbon could have been stitched uh, at the same time as I was stitching the, the book itself. Uh, I thought a button closure. I thought, do I use an elastic band to go all the way around? And I didn't like it. I did not want the, anything covering, even a thin piece of elastic band covering the embroidery. So I was going to put a button so that it could kind of, I could do some sort of a loop. Uh, but of course, I changed my mind again. <laughs> uh, this is why making videos like this is, is great because uh, for me, I can show you my process, my way of, of, of thinking, and how sometimes that doesn't work. And then at this point you say, oh, she did it this way. Well, uh, that didn't work. I'm going to do it differently. But you get the idea what I was after. So I ended up finding these two little um, eyelets, which is funny because <laughs> you would think, oh my gosh, seriously, you're still using that hammer? Yeah, I lost my other tool uh, in this crocodile, which it obviously that's what it's for. The one piece of this size eyelet is broken. So thank goodness I had the old fashioned hammer and <laughs> uh, eyelet setter that still works. So I'm setting up um, the other eyelet. And then I'm going to be attaching this very pretty ribbon that's going to create the closure. And that is it for this cover, you guys. I felt that it was it was easy once I knew which way I was going. I hope that you found either something, a technique that you didn't know. But if you knew it and you found a different way to do it, that's also great. Uh, learn from my mistakes, uh, which, you know, again, there was nothing bad that couldn't be fixed or anything like that. Everything is still worked. Um, so thank you so much. I'm going to start kind of, you know, telling you my goodbyes because I'm going to be running out of time like I always do. So I'm going to finish this book by cutting this um, binding. What is that called? Seaming or oh, seam binding. I think that's what it's called, seam binding, that this is type of ribbon. And I love the color, and it's going to create just a simple little cover, uh, closure. And then I decide to add one little thing. Again, you see stuff all over Instagram or Pinterest, and then you remember, and I wish I could give credit to the person that I saw this journal um, that did this, but I can't remember. But it's this is just a little tassel that I made. And I'm just going to clip it to the ribbon. And that's it. My cover is done. I am so excited. I absolutely love it. Uh, and all I have to do now is create the insert. And I will definitely have another video for you. So stay close. I mean, stay stay uh, tuned for close-ups. And I will add all the links uh, that are pertaining to this project. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm.